Hello guys, so in this video I want to show you how to make a very basic screen for your speed wino. So this is a Nextion screen, it's running a little, um, it's only being used for power at the moment, I've not actually put the uh, TXRX in for the serial output, but this will take serial 3 to the ECU into this mega and then serial 2 from this mega into the screen. And here you'll see that we have all of the uh, values. We also have a couple of touch buttons. So if I touch that, it will go onto a second screen. If I touch that, it will go back. 3D printed a little case for everything. Um, so yeah, going on to the code of how I've done this. Next. So here is some code that I have put together with help from other people on the internet. Now I'll link below where I got the original code from that I've taken snippets from to make this. Now starting at the top we've got some definitions, we've got the packet length for 75, the NO2C serial which is what I'm calling it, um, this is serial 3 which is from the ECU to the Mega and it's going to be running ne Nextion or Nextion screen or whatever you pronounce it. Serial 2 which is going to power the Nextion so you're going to have serial 3 to serial 3, um, Mega 2560s so if you're speedy and your Mega if you're both running megas, you go serial to serial three, and then serial two from your standalone mega for the next gen screen to the screen. Um, this is the version of speed we know I'm running. Make sure that the baud rates are all 115200, uh, all of them. Um, so here we go, serial, if the serial is found, do, 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 then we write A. This gives us the first packet of data. This gives us 75 SNPs, I think it is. Um, there is N or R commands, depending on what you want. They run different um, different amounts of data. You'll have to edit the list. So if you wanted to use the N or R data packets or data sets, you'd have to change all of these to match. I'm just using the basic ones for now. I only really want things like VE, RPM, O2, uh, battery coolant, IoT, map, dwell. Yeah, most of the things that you're going to need are on the original 72 list. There is also CAN IDs here as well. I'm not getting involved with CAN. I'm not sure how that works. So um, adding on to that, you've got the status bits. You've got running, crank, after start enrichment and warm up. Uh, launch hard, launch soft, limit hard, limit soft, boost, cut, air, and sync. Um, I've used all of these in mine. Uh, this is cut down from mine. This is very basic, but I'll show you how to edit it. Mine's got lots of additional bits on there. So this is what is sent to the Nextian screen to display. So it's taken this information above here. So you're printing your map, taking your map, and you're printing it to the screen as this above. The last three OXFFs are to cancel this, so it turns this off. Um, after a text, you have to put OX22 to tell it that this is text. You don't have to do it on values. So anywhere you've got a dot .val, which is a number, you don't have to have it. Where it's a dot .text, you do. Dot .texts work better for gauges, I found, but you can map text. Oh, no, you can. I'm an idiot. Um, so where's it to down here so something like this TPS val you can map it so throttle position is mapped 0 to 100 0 to 100 seems a bit daft but it's so it's a gauge and the same with uh, RPM gauge for example there's a taco down here so 0 to 8000 RPM and we have mapped that 0 to 100 so the, the gauge is 0 to 100 percent so 8000 RPM being 100 percent 0 percent being 0 if, for example, you want to add in um, your VE values, so say you've got here your ignition.txt, well, I'll just for ease of use, I'm going to copy this. So we'll see, Let's stick it there. Um, don't know where it's indented that. Change ignition text to something like V, and then here where your advance is, VE, I'm just going to double check that above, VE, 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 yep, VE, full state is 18, and that gives us now our VE output, so that 
copying across now we'll have a little box a gauge that will tell us our VE and we can do that for any of these values um, anything on here we can do that with so if you want your TPS to be um, a percentage value rather than a bar so that's done as a bar um, you can also do a different way I'll, how do I do it earlier I'm pretty sure I have done on my code I think I modified it like this I'll double check and it should work the same so we've got VE, VE so in there I put TPS 1 so this is what you're going to write on the next gen screen and in here we gave it the value of TPS so then we've got TPS there and that will give us the exact well, give up, that will give us a text bar for TPS uh, whereas that gives us a status bar for TPS and I'll show you how that works in just a second with the RPM this was done so that you could map a gauge it needs correcting I've not really played about with this I'm just using a the bar gauge as stated below so that's that's the basic script going down from gauges and numbers we've got bits so these I'm all using images for these so it's make it visible if this is one not visible off so one on zero off um, so again create an image launch s display as picture for launch soft limit same launch hard rev soft rev hard boost cut after start enrichment warm up error error sync sync running crank and then end of script so this is a basic script that should get you running run a compile serial 2 is not to close all right, that is because it thinks I'm running a meta. Again, make sure you've got the settings correct. It thinks I was running a mega uh, nano instead of a mega. And there we go, compiled. So I'm going to go ahead and save that sketch and I'll upload this onto. I'll, I'll upload to somewhere for where you guys to have access, whether it's Google Drive or whatever. And uh, we'll go on to look at the screen in just a second. So, now we've got a bit of script written on an Arduino, which takes the serial from the Speedwino and outputs it to Nextian to your screen. We now need to display that screen as a new one. So, we're going to hit a new project, um, race-v2. I'm going to call this one Project Example project example uh, click what screen you've got now mine is the basic 050 5 inch choose a direction horizontal and that's my screen um, so the first thing you're going to want to do is add in text so click on font generator I quite like to use or I have been using for mine the Franklin Gothic medium in a size I think it's about 28, maybe more. Um, I'm going to put in 50 for now. Font name is going to be 1. Uh, for every size, you're going to have to create a new font. So you may end up creating lots of different fonts. Um, font generated, add the font, yes. So now we go into here and we have a font. Um, but we still have a bare naked screen. So if we go into pictures, if we go on here and review by medium icons, maybe bigger. There we go. So we have the various different things we want. I'm going to select them all. So these are all things that I've done prior in image manipulation software. So a variety of uh, GIMP, GIMP, or even Microsoft Paint. Um, I'm going to so you start by adding in the background. I have to create a background prior to making the software. So this is a background I've got. It makes life so much easier if any static text that doesn't need to change is written onto the background. 
So, for example, the AFR, IAT, VE, your coolant, your throttle, your advance, your map, your bat, anything like that, have it written into the background because adding extra text bars creates issues and it was making them, I was having loads of issues with it. This is the easiest way I found to do it. Um, so now you've got your background with where you want, what you want, where you want it. Ignore this error down here. Um, this is simply so that the error remains green unless there is an error. So for example, I'll show you this one. Um, we will add a picture. We will drag it down to here. That picture is going to be the error bar. Like that. And we're going to... You can fine tune that to wherever you want. So now we've got that one. And object name is error. So let me just check the code and go back down to the bottom of the code and here it says viz error. So it's actually capital E. I don't know if that makes a difference. You call whatever it's called in your script, you'll call it in your object name. So there we go. So in normal running, you'll have it'll be viz error. Ooh, I have called the background error by mistake. That's uh that's an idiot thing to do. Let's call that one. <laughs> so let's call that B1, background one. That was uh, an error I made there. I was supposed to call that error. There we go. So now when you debug and you this error zero. Because this is going to be the normal state. You're going to have no errors. When you have an error, that's going to turn to 1, and it's going to go red. So that's that one. Progress bar. Um, stick a progress bar in there, like that, for RPM. So this is going to be my RPM gauge, how, I, how I've done an RPM gauge. It's not the best way to do it. This is just how I've done it. Go down here click solid color we want an image now you must have both background picture which we're going to have as a gray bar this one here and foreground picture which is going to be your bar chart both of those have to be filled if they are not filled what will happen is the gauge will only go up and it will not go back down so that's it full rpm whatever rpm you set 100% and that's at zero RPM. Uh, we can set it to whatever we want. Um, so now we've called it object name RPM. <coughs> that's what it's called. So in the debug menu, so we're going to do it. We can go RPM dot val equals seventy five. RPM goes up. RPM dot val equals ten. RPM goes down. So there's your RPM gauge done nice and quickly and now the last one I'm going to show you is how to do a text box so we're going to use AFR for this so I fill in the box now I've already gone ahead and um, input the color codes into here for what I want so new text oh no that is the only text we've got um, for now, I'm just going to put a holding value in there of 15.0. And object name is going to be AFR. Like that. So, when we go back to script here, I can see AFR, 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 beep, 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 beep. Let me... AFR.text equals. So, this didn't work last time for some reason. We should go in here and go fr dot txt equals 14.7 doesn't work why is that not working it's worked fine for me every single time so far and now it doesn't it's definitely called fr I am confused. But anyway, there's 
that's how you would put in your AFR gauges and all the rest of it. Why it's not. Oh, and also, one other thing you must do. Why oh, my mouse has gone skittish? Right. First thing you've got to, uh, another thing to do is 15200, configure your baud rate to 15200, the same as your Arduino, which is 1150. Yep. So that's done, compile. And that's how you do your screen. Let's fly in front of my screen. If you wanted to do, for example, a flat, uh, splash screen, um, this is we move those down. Page one is now going to be the splash screen. We put a picture in of the random AI generated logo like that. We will add a timer. That timer this is 400 milliseconds. So we go three seconds like that. Um, and after three seconds, we are going to go to page one. And now when we debug. It'll sit there for three seconds and go to page one. So there's your splash screen, how to set that up. And then if we go and make another page, um, I'm just going to put in a random picture in there for now. My logo just there. Um, we're going to go into this hotspot. Go down here, I'm going to cover this area down here. When that's touched, and we're going to go page two. Debug. Wait the three seconds for that to go. Touch that, you're on the page. And you can do that again, so you know you can touch that to go back. Um, that is how it basic it is to make this. Um, takes a lot of trial and error. Um, in the end, it took me about an hour to do a decent um, setup, and that was not including all of the artwork that I'd done previously in Paint. So I hope that helps everyone doing CAN or serial dashes using Nexion screens and Arduinos. Um, like I said, there should be some stuff in the comments below. I'll put them in the uh, description. Some links to the code and links to a, if I can, links to a generic um, screen setup if I can. It might just be the code and you might have to just be on your own for making your own dashboard. But um, anyway, I thanks for watching and uh, I hope you found it somewhat informative.